the fate of Skytrain lay in the hands of Rowland. With Sir Freddie, he went straight to the back. George Gillespie said, um, I can't take the money. I don't know how to deal with it. I think that they were at the middle bank were disappointed that Freddie had been able to find somebody to back him to pay off his overdraft. The refusal meant liquidation for Laker. Rowland then offered up to eight million pounds for Laker's hangar at Gatwick. This time, the receiver refused his offer. Well, there was a hidden agenda, as far as I was concerned. Mm. Shortly after uh, Lonray's uh, offer was refused, uh, British Caledonian acquired the hangar facilities at Gatwick, which uh, were fundamental to the operation of, of a future airline. I believe that it was planned, premeditated, and I don't think he had a chance. Uh, I think that those people that did it did the industry a great disservice, an enormous disservice, because I think there is so much that he could still have done. Laker's liquidator sold some of his planes to his rivals. The rest found their way to a graveyard in the desert. But as they lay rotting, Laker's planes came to pose an even greater threat to Lord King's bid to privatise BA than when they were in the air. Having studied Laker's claims that his demise had been planned by his rivals and that the fair cuts had been designed to force him out of business, the liquidator decided on court action. We had a long discussion amongst ourselves and uh, decided that weighing up all the pros and cons, we should press the button and allow the complaint to be filed in America. Christopher Morris took action against BA and the cartel of IATA carriers under America's stiff competition laws, which are designed to protect businesses from predatory and monopolistic practices. Then the American Department of Justice independently started to investigate the price-fixing charges. The investigation was led by Elliot Seiden, head of the transportation section of the antitrust division. The nature of the violation was serious. The nature of the violation uh, that was being investigated was unauthorized price fixing. And price fixing is considered in the United States to be one of the most serious antitrust violations that can be committed. The investigations produced a lengthy crisis in Anglo-American relations. Thatcher vigorously defended Lord King in BA, while the Attorney General unsuccessfully asked the House of Lords to prevent Morris from pursuing his case in America. British airline executives were then instructed not to give evidence in US courts, and Sir Freddie was then threatened if he cooperated with the American investigators. They introduced the Protect the British Trading Act on me, and they got the House of Lords to agree that we couldn't sue them in the United Kingdom, so we had to go to America. And I got a piece of paper to say that I'd be in contempt of court if I gave any evidence. And I said, well, what are you going to do if I give him? They said, well, you'll probably go to jail. I said, then I'm going to jail because I'm going to give the evidence. First getting Freddie into the grand jury was a bit of an excitement because no one, the government nor us, wanted the airlines and the other governments to know that the grand jury was investigating this matter. It was kept very secret. When the the, when they left and they were outside, they used to come up and shake my hand and slap me on the back. And in the court they clap and cheer. I mean, every, I mean, no one, I couldn't have lost even if I was guilty. I mean, the grand jury was so on my side that even I thought it was unfair. <laughs> It took Elliot Seiden and his team of lawyers 18 months to determine the issues. The investigation work had been completed and the issue before the United States government was whether to proceed and if so, how. Seiden's grand jury decided to accuse senior BA executives of price fixing. And BA would be the only airline in the dock, as the liquidator's American lawyer confirms. Am I right in saying that the executives who would have been in the dock had the criminal investigation gone ahead were really quite senior people? Oh, yes. Right. Um, if I were to suggest to you that they um, might have included Hugh Wellborn, John Meredith, 
and Jerry Draper, would I be far from the truth? No, you would not. And indeed, Bob Beckman used to say that the secret of this case was to bring the case into the boardrooms of the defendants, including British Airways. So you're right on the mark. <laughs> Laker believed his sky train would fly again if Lord King's executives were found guilty of the price-fixing charges. If we had won with an indictment behind us we couldn't lose, then we would probably, Laker, would have got several things out of it. One is the company would have been reconstituted. We would have got our licenses back by law. We would have had the money to get our aeroplanes back or buy new ones and we would have had substantial damages where we would have probably got about one and a half billion which was the total value of British Airways. But big airlines have powerful friends. As the federal grand jury prepared to accuse BA of price fixing, Thatcher's government bombarded all sections of the American administration with pleas to cancel the investigation. When the Americans announced they